we are getting down to the deadline. Depending on who you ask, we are past the deadline. We're past the deadline for certification. Uh, the mainstream media, the establishment media, celebrity culture, they all think this is a slam dunk for Biden. YouTube has said, hey, if you talk about Biden having won by um, because of fraud, then uh, you're out. We're nuking your video. They really think they've got this in the bag. But now Texas, of all places, Texas has thrown a monkey wrench into into everything. They have filed suit against four states, Georgia, Wisconsin, Michigan, in Pennsylvania. They did that Monday. You've probably been paying some some amount of attention to this. What I found happening, though, was I was I was seeing more media just about the case being filed than about what the case actually was, what's actually happening there. So I want to take us through that case quickly. Right. And then and I've, I've got to read a couple things. So bear with us here. Uh, but then I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. I started the day really thinking the same way I've been thinking for a while. I hate to say it, but just sort of out of despair thinking, I don't know if we're going to pull this thing out. After reading up on the case, I really think there's a decent chance for Trump. Really? Yeah, I really do think there's a decent chance for Trump. But I'm going to explain it. And okay. first off, we got to give credit here. Margot Cleveland over at the Federalist wrote the piece that I'm about to pull from. She was uh, she spent 25 years as an appellate court clerk. She knows what she's talking yep. about. Mm -hmm. She breaks down what's happening with the Texas suit, what the claims are, and why it's significant. So allow me to read just a couple of things here. First off, don't get the idea this is Bush v. Gore. We all remember hanging chads. We all remember what happened in 2000. This is not Bush v. Gore. This is not two people taking each other to court. This is Texas dragging four other, trying to drag, asking permission from the Supreme Court to drag four other states to court for some very specific reasons. Texas is not alleging widespread voter fraud. They're not alleging yeah. that voter fraud itself took place. And I think Texas, in doing that, has figured out something that we we should have figured out from the very yes. beginning. Yeah. Um, and, and I and the reason folks don't get mad at me. The reason I said earlier, I've been kind of in this depressed mode where I'm thinking I'm afraid Biden is going to take this thing is because we've tried and tried through the courts with the voter fraud stuff and none of it's sticking. Yes. None of it's no. sticking. Yes. Now, look, you can say I hear you out there and you're saying, oh, but there was so much voter fraud and this and that and the other. And there may well have been. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a judge. I'm not hearing the cases. I've read I've read some of the suits. I've read some of the affidavits. Right. What we should not have done was go after the fraud element. What we should have done is do what Texas is doing and go after the element that says, look, these states were changing the rules on how elections were conducted and they were doing it without going through state legislatures. The United States Constitution vests state legislatures and them alone with determining how elections are held. So what Texas is doing is they are going to the Supreme Court and they are trying to get a court order uh, uh, dealing with Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, and basically trying to prevent them from certifying their presidential electors. Now, I'm not going to go down. I think the, the, I can't remember how many pages the suit was. Maybe nine, I feel like it was 97 or something. I'm not going to read 97 <laughs> pages to you. I'm going to pull out three quick excerpts from, uh, from Cleveland's piece. First off, what Texas points out, several large Wisconsin counties, and by the way, Wis well, I'll point that out in a minute. Several large Wisconsin, Wisconsin counties use drop boxes in direct violation of Wisconsin election code. They also ignore the statutory certification requirements for absentee ballots, counting the votes that the state legislature defined as illegal because they did not include a witness signature and address. Michigan, similarly, violated the statutory mandates established by the state legislature with the Secretary of State mass mailing absentee ballots in contravention of state law. They also ignored the state signature verification requirement. Georgia also violated the signature verification requirement in that state, according to Texas complaint. Finally, Pennsylvania, where it was most egregious, Pen uh, as claimed by the, K uh, by the, uh, by the Texas brief. Right. In Pennsylvania, election officials ignored the statutory bar on inspecting ballots before Election Day, then illegally provided voter information to third parties and allowed illegal curing of the ballots. Significantly in Pennsylvania, these illegal practices only occurred in Democratic strongholds with Republicans 
instead following the law. Again, that's according to uh, the Texas brief with the Supreme Court, as as recounted by um, Cleveland over at the Federalist. So what Texas has done is they've gone in and they've said they've said, forget this idea of discrete fraud. Uh, forget the idea of dominion and these things. Look, here's the deal. The legislatures are the ones who are supposed to make the rules. And all of a sudden, right. you've got these uh, these um, uh, executive branch officers who they just took it upon themselves to change the rules. And the thing I was going to point out, by the way, in three out of the four cases in, uh, uh, in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania and Michigan, they all have Democrat governors. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. their, sen- their state legislatures, Senate and House Controlled by Republicans, every yep. one of them, every one of them. But instead of going through the Republican legislatures, they just decided through executive fiat that they were going to change the rules. Now that look land wherever you want on voter fraud. I don't care where you land on that. Yes. Forget that. Say there wasn't an ounce of fraud. Say there wasn't any fraud at all. The executives and states don't just get to contravene the Constitution okay. of the United States. Now. Here's what happens. So I'm sorry I'm filibustering this, but I want to give you a quick rundown. on what good stuff. So good stuff. Texas is not trying to have the election handed to Trump. They're not interested in that. Again, yeah. this is not Bush v. Gore. Mm-hmm. Texas is trying to keep these states from certifying their electors and then forcing these state legislatures to pick the electors. Yep. Now, this is very significant for a couple of reasons. First off, the Supreme Court does not want to have anything to do with this. Nobody on that court wants to be one of the ones responsible for. I mean, God, you know, history always starts when you're born. There may have been a more contentious election, which is Andrew Johnson, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but gosh, it's hard to cons- <laughs> it's hard to think there are more than one or two out there. No Supreme Court justice wants to be in that position, have his name attached to that. No. So they have every incentive to send it back to the states, which is exactly what Texas wants. They want this going back to the states. They want it going to the state legislatures. Those state legislators, they are the Republicans there are scared for their lives. Literally. Li- well, yeah. And God forgive us for the people who have made them literally scared. Yeah. That, but but oh, what's her name? Cynthia. What was her name? Uh, Jackson. What's that? That. Uh, uh, yeah, I can't remember her name anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But any, anyway, these yeah. guys know these state legislators know it's all on the line. If they drop the ball here, their constituents are going to remember it in two years mm-hmm. uh, and they are going to be out of a job. And to a one, the state legislatures in these states are controlled by Republicans. Now, the other thing that those state legislators can do if they don't have the guts to actually select a a slate of electors for Trump, they can just decide we're not going to send electors. Yep. Screw it all. It's beyond it's it's beyond repair. There's nothing we can do about it. We're just not going to send electors. Now, what that does. I did math earlier. This is where things get interesting. This is where things get interesting. (laughs) What that does, you've basically got 62 electoral votes at stake here with Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Georgia. What that does, if they all decided, screw it, we're not sending electors, Biden goes from 306 electoral votes down to 244. That is not enough. He needs 270. If Trump, if any two of those states decide, all right, we're going to send a Trump slate of electors, and the others don't send anybody, Trump instantly wins. If none of, if Trump only gets one of those states, if nobody gets to 270, then we're back in the scenario we talked about for a while ahead of time. This goes back to the United States House, but the United States House, even though it's controlled by Democrats, the vote is based on state delegations. That's the best, that's the best part, yeah. Re- Republicans <laughs> control most of the state delegations yep. uh, by 26 to 24 or uh, or 23, depending on how screwed up Pennsylvania is when yep. they're, when, when, if you're thinking about before the election or after. Anyway, those are real, tangible ways that Trump actually could pull this out. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm not even saying it's likely to happen. I think it is a lot more likely to happen than I thought it was before Texas filed. And I think Texas was brilliant. We're about to go over time, and I filibustered here, but I want to get a couple quick comments from you guys. Just tell me, uh, just, uh, let's do Jonah first, then Michael. Jonah, tell me what you think about this. Just, just ideas 
Um, I think it's incredible. I mean, I've been in the same. I've been in the boat of not even. I don't think Trump is gonna pull this out. I just. It's I, almost hopeless. That's what it's right, felt like. Right. It's almost hopeless. We've tried to hold out hope mm-hmm. for you guys. We've wanted to look at the bright bright side, but it has felt hopeless. Exactly, and and that's not a fun place to be. Yeah, it's you horrible. Know? It's it's, it's, it's horrible. a hard place to be yeah. in. Um, it does offer. I'm running some, out of Lexapro. <laughs> it's. I mean, it's horrible. Yeah, it's uh, it it's encouraging though. It is really, it is. really encouraging to see, and not be not necessarily just because you know tr- we want Trump in the White House for four more years. I think that's pretty clear. It's encouraging to see because you would hope that the people we elect into office that we vote for to represent us, you would hope they would try to follow the Constitution. Yeah, yeah. and that clearly. At least in regards to these states and, that have not allowed, um, you know, for the le- legislatures to do their job. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it gives you hope, I and, guess. And this is not, I can only speak for me, but this doesn't excite me because I think my guy's going to win. Mm-hmm. That would be neat. The most exciting part about this, I think, I hope for me is that it looks like the Constitution really may prevail here. Yes. Yes. And absolutely. it reminds me how brilliant the founders were. Yeah, because were. the president is yes. actually the president of the states. He's not really the president of the people. That's why he's not directly elected yes. by the people. He's the president of the states. And that's what Texas is saying here is, like, look, we are a state. We're entitled to a vote here. And yep. by the way, we've got two senators just like everybody else does. Turns out... The vice president is. We know the vice president is the president of the Senate and cast the tie-breaking vote. Turns out that tie-breaking vote may be used a whole lot in the days to come yes. because the Senate's yeah. so close. And Texas is saying, "Look, if you guys get away with this, you're disenfranchising us. You're disenfranchising our senators." But I think this is potentially an enormous victory for the Constitution. Yes. And I hope, I hope if the roles were reversed, I mean, it would be a bitter pill if the roles were reversed and it were Biden. That was depending on the Constitution being followed to the letter. But I hope I would yeah. want that. Yeah. It's brilliant the way they've set it up. And Texas saw it. And and we should have seen this from the beginning. Instead of going after all of the voter fraud allegations that have been so difficult to prove, mm-hmm. we should have been going after that. We that's, should have just gone back to that. Since the beginning of all of these widespread voter fraud allegations, yeah. I've, I've been really pessimistic just pessimistic about the whole thing and i've just yeah. from the beginning i've seen certain things that like people didn't pick up on for a very long time like for instance for instance the the vote drop in the middle of the night yeah that yeah. sure looks shady but if you really understand what's going on that's not actually super unusual mm-hmm. and just things like that people kept saying oh yeah widespread voter fraud widespread voter fraud there was never huge evidence of it but Along the way, there were lots of pieces of evidence about a lot of the things that this suit details. Yes. yes. And finally seeing them all put together is it's really nice and it it give it does give me a lot of hope and man, if it <laughs> if things went to the the house and it ended up that, you know, the constitution and federalism won out in the end, I would be laughing. What a so sweet hard. That would be sweet such a victory. Yeah. And to be honest, I mean, it will the what the left will do in response to that will be terrible, mm-hmm. but it it might be one of the sweetest ways to actually win an election. Yes. Where the Constitution has been followed to the letter uh, to the letter and it changes absolutely everything. Yeah. Um, and, and I agree with you. I, I think you're right. The part of the difficulty with voter fraud, and I'm curious if you guys feel like this, too. You can talk maybe mention it in the comments if yeah. you want to. We'd like to hear what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. The challenge I've had with the voter fraud allegations is that for every allegation, there is a counter allegation, yep. and I don't have access to a Dominion voting machine right. to take it apart. Mm-hmm. I don't have video. Uh, now, I've got little snippets of video that go viral showing what look like suitcases or this or that, but I don't have the whole video. I don't know the people who were there. I don't know all of this stuff. What I do know is the Constitution, and what is e- very yes. easy to figure out is the mm-hmm. Constitution and what the state legislature said about how elections were to be carried out. That is easy to define. It is in black and white. There is no opinion on it whatsoever. It's mm-hmm. does, it, does it exist or does it not exist? Did the state legislature say this is how elections are to be carried out, or did it not say that, right. and did you comply with it? Mm-hmm. 
that is very easy to figure out. And again, it will be the sweetest thing in the world, I think, if Trump actually pulls this out. Thanks to the new, the incredibly <laughs> prescient, perspicacious nuances that the founders yeah. had when they built the Constitution. It's an incredible thought. Now, having said all of that, just for you Facebook people, who, uh, for you YouTube people who are listening, and any of you Facebook people too, to be clear, I did not say Joe Biden won by voter fraud. I did not. I don't concede that he's won yet. We'll see. It'll be interesting. I don't concede that anybody's won yet. But what is interesting here is what Texas is doing, yes. what the Supreme Court is motivated to do here, mm -hmm. which is kick it back to the states, and then what the state legislators are motivated to do, which is keep their seats. And this this suit has a lot more legs than anything we've seen. Way, yet, so. way, way yeah. more. And I, I would be very curious. I'd love to talk to the Texas AG and see how long they've been planning this. I've got mm -hmm. some some personal friends who are... Uh, well, actually, actually, our attorneys are my me and my wife. They, uh, my, my wife and I, have to have attorneys to talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> We're happily married, uh, but they've represented us in a couple of things. They're actually helping the president's team, uh, and I, I want to talk with them and say, "Hey, yeah. look, when did did we just wait until the eleventh hour because we wanted to exhaust everything else? Why did we not do this earlier?" And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm afraid the answer is we didn't think about it. We didn't actually read things the way we should have read them. But it makes so, again, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm filibuster. I'm just so excited about this. Mm -hmm. This is, guys, this is what we were talking about yeah. weeks ahead of the election. Not that they were going to, not that they were going to come in and truck ballots in in the night. Yes. I don't think I ever predicted that. No. No, that was what always. What we that. were worried about was mailing out millions of absentee ballots. What we were worried about was not checking signatures. What we were worried about was executives bureaucrats deciding how elections were going to be conducted mm -hmm. and then we foolishly got caught up in the craziness some, afterwards some, a lot of conspiracy theories there were a yes. lot of conspiracy and, theories and they drowned out a lot of the real they did problems. they did which is exactly what the the left wants yes. to happen yes. that's by the way that's why they talk about QAnon so much they don't actually think QAnon <laughs> is that bad a thing they want to talk about it more and more because they want to uh, they want to stick Republicans in that box. They've given it all the influence. Uh, it has. They they have, yeah. and ironically, it gains more influence the more they yes. talk about it. Yes, yes. Um, but anyway, that's that's an aside. So, folks, I hope you leave the podcast today. I hope you leave WJ Live today a little a little more encouraged than when you started. Maybe I'm more encouraged than when I started. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be very interesting to see what happened. The deadline just passed uh, within the last. Uh, hour or two for those states to respond to Texas uh, Texas brief that they filed with Supreme Court. So uh, the Supreme Court asked for them to move in an expedited fashion since the clock is really ticking. Uh, we'll be following it over at the Western Journal uh, dot com and um, we'll be looking at what's happening there and reporting on it as as we learn more. Anyway, folks, um, be encouraged. And hey, listen, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we don't serve a president. We don't serve a Congress. We serve a king. We didn't vote him in. We can't vote him out. King Jesus. Amen. He, where, as my old pastor Adrian Rogers used to say, where God doesn't rule, he overrules. Listen, no fear. I think it's Corey Ten Boone, maybe, who said there's no panic in heaven, only plans. Do not panic over any of this. If Biden ends up winning, if Biden ends up in office, it is not the end of the world. God prevails and he has got a plan for us. So be encouraged in that too. Hi, my name is Samantha and I'm the community manager for the Western Journal. We've really enjoyed recording WJ Live these last few weeks and we have some exciting news. We are now on Apple Podcasts, but we need to ask you a favor. In order to equip even more listeners with the truth and fight against big tech, we need to get more subscribers and reviews. So please, go find WJ Live on Apple Podcasts. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a five-star review. Oh, and tell them you want to see more of me on the podcast. Thank you for helping us out. And don't forget that you can catch a new episode of WJ Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific on YouTube and now Apple Podcasts.